How's it going guys? Lucas here. Let me show you what's new in Lazy Panda Toolkit. To start with, we have some new features in the Make Daily tool, uh, which just makes it way more usable on the daily basis. So if you click on it, you get a little prompt here. It will ask you for the start frame, the end frame, your studio name and the project name. These two will be remembered until you change them. So let's do a quick preview here. I will go from frame 50 to let's say 70 or 75. And I will do here my studio name and the project is, let's call it, just call it Coral. Okay, click okay. And you will see, it will start capturing. Once it's captured, um, it's actually doing an M play flip book here on the other screen as well. But once it's captured, um, it will create the MP4 automatically and it will do uh, some burn-ins. And after it's done, you can see it opened the window here with the, with the file. And if I open, you'll see here. But you can see studio name, project name, date and time, uh, use scene name and the current frame from where you started. I will probably change that in the future or on the next release to mirror the exact frame inside of Houdini because um, that way it will be easier to find a new scene. Now it's easy to com communicate uh, because it always starts at one but I like it to be tied more to the Houdini scene so that will be changed probably very soon. So yeah and you can al already see what the new uh, coral growth is doing but as I told you it will remember the studio name, it won't remember start and end frame because that's a bit stupid I think um, I would just keep it like that and you just type whatever you need in here cool up to the next tool okay next up we have the lazy panda light link as you can see here you can open it pretty much everywhere it's just a paint tab uh, you can do new paint tab uh, lazy panda lazy panda light link and if you have a redshift light uh, I just created two here one red and one blue to demonstrate a bit better you can see if I click on one of them, for example, on two, and I click prep and load, it loads these things here. If I go on light, I can turn it off and on, and you can see it turns off and on here as well. I can solo the light, which turns off everything else except that light, and you can unsolo again. You can see it's red now because it's soloed, and you can unsolo again, and everything else turns on. It indicates by turning the other lights black. And then obviously for the actual light linking, you can go to the object tab you can see as soon as you click click prep load light makes a new light turns it this orangey color and actually turns on the setting and then if you click on lights include or exclude it uh, it actually excludes object here and the same works for shadows and you can yeah pretty much mix, mix and match everything in here and that works pretty flawlessly let me actually open a render view and demonstrate all right so you yeah, have the render view open and let me it a little smaller again you can see blue lights red lights and one thing very important not sure why is new to redshift but the lights have to be on candidate light to read the on and off parameter don't ask me why i have no idea uh it just happened in the latest version i think i was sure it worked before but i'm not 100 percent sure because usually i pick them by hand anyways but yeah just, just to keep in mind, make sure that's actually valid. So if I do that, you can see I'm on this light now. I think it's the red light. And if I turn it off, you can see it turns off. Yeah, it's the red light. So only blue is on. Uh, and also I can solo the light, only red is on. All the blues are off. And now obviously I can also exclude the red light for the two left characters and maybe also the shadow for the first one. The shadow you don't really see here, obviously, but um, yeah. That's how it works. I can also go to the blue light, do the same. Only blue, only red. Turn these two off, turn that one off. And it works pretty well. Obviously, it sometimes has hiccups. Sometimes it doesn't load the light. Then you just have to select another one and just hit load again. And then it works again. Um, I'm trying to smooth those things out. But as usual with coding, there are some mi mi minor things here and there. But yeah, I will make sure they work flawlessly. If you encounter any bugs, please let me know so uh, I can figure that out as well because I obviously can't test everything. I don't really have the time. Uh, but yeah, that's a new light link. I use it almost every day now because it's quite handy and makes it a bit 
easier to do light linking because I feel like it's a bit tedious in here. Obviously, if you're using Solaris, you don't have to worry about that anymore, but uh, I know a lot of people didn't switch yet. So yeah, here you go. All right. So now let's have a look at the coral growth as promised. And this one got an addition, the recursive growth. So the differential growth you all already knew. Um, I didn't do a tutorial about it, but it's actually quite, yeah, quite simple to do. So you have an input, which is in this case, just a mountain geometry. And then you have like emission points, start points. And I just blasted a point here. You can maybe see it, it's here, um, just one point. So if you, bring both of them in here you have the differential growth settings here everything else is for all the uh, recursive type but uh, let me just reset the simulation and if i hit play you can see it starts from the the point that we set down here you can also set multiple points it doesn't need to just be one uh, you can set multiple ones as well but i just picked random point 120 here and you can see yeah it starts growing Oh, it looks kind of cool actually i like this one a lot and yeah that's the differential growth then the other one is the recursive growth you can also see velocity field this just visualizes the velocity field for the recursive growth uh you can't touch that here right now uh if you wanted to you obviously you can go inside and change it in there uh it's all pretty clear in here you should find it and you should should be able to change it if you want to uh but usually this is a pretty good like standard size i would say uh, it gives you a pretty nice result so if i go to re to the recursive growth uh right now it's actually ignoring this second input here it's only taking the first one uh, i will change that as well but it's a bit more annoying to do on this one so uh, i, I want to find the a good proper way for us to do it and then integrate it and also then i will clean up the interface a bit more but yeah that's how it is now and you can see you have a lot of settings here uh, they will also be a bit easier labeled and maybe i make some of them more automatic than they are now basically what it's doing is looking for like the curv curvature gradient on the object and this is the object that we put in here you can see it's already a bit grown and this is like the ramp like how drastic you want it to behave on the curvature so if you would widen this it would grow in more places and not just the sharpest corners basically yeah and this is the voxel size obviously so if it's planetary it's a vdb underneath that's basically growing so if you want more resolution or less resolution you can tweak it here be careful with your scene scale vdbs tend to explode if you see <laughs> scene scale is a little bit um and it might uh yeah stop you pc so let's have a look at it uh, i will just leave the parameters as they are feel free to play with them uh, it's like different like growth scales and curvature re remaps and stuff like that uh, but the default should work quite well so if i hit play here um, you can see the basically the vdb grows along those velocity trails that you saw before and it creates these nice cool looking things here uh, and i actually like it quite a bit obviously next version will get a bit more control over all of this um, but this already looks really cool and if you find like a good camera angle like, let me load the cache here you can actually get some pretty neat results do some like subsurface scattering uh, some cool lighting um, you can make it disgusting or you make it looking you can make it look really cool uh, fascinating i don't know with some gold or whatever yeah that's up to you i'm probably not showing a render here maybe i will add one later but for now that's it feel free to play with all the parameters and see what they do uh feel also free to dive inside and check out how, how it's actually working and yeah i hope you enjoy that additional version of the coral growth and i will do a proper separate tutorial as soon as i clean that one up a bit more yeah and then you will probably also see a render cool all right see you on the next one let me know if anything is failing or if you want to see an additional feature and yeah see you soon bye